If you're looking to build your own home and lead the project yourself, you must obtain an Owner Builder authorization from BC Housing. Owner Builders are authorized by BC Housing to build and occupy a new home for their personal use. Although you don't need to be a licensed general contractor as an owner builder, your authorization requires you to have sufficient knowledge and understanding of residential construction and your obligations under the Homeowner Protection Act and its regulation. This video will explain all the necessary information you will be required to know in order to successfully answer the statutory obligations and requirements portion of the owner builder exam. This guide will also cover the eligibility criteria in order to apply for an owner builder authorization and your statutory obligations as identified in the Homeowner Protection Act regulation. However, information relating to the construction basic section of the owner builder exam will not be covered. Rather, BC Housing recommends consulting the online education registry to find a range of optional courses offered by colleges and industry associations on construction topics such as the building code, construction technology, and construction management. The online education registry is available on the BC Housing website. Finally, the study guide entitled Preparing for the Owner Builder Authorization Exam is also available for download from the website. It covers what you'll need to know to pass the exam, answers commonly asked questions, and explains the exam process, including scheduling, writing the exam, and more. It's a great place to start as you begin the process. To become an owner builder, you must meet all the eligibility criteria and pass the Owner Builder Authorization Exam as part of your application. The exam evaluates your knowledge of both residential construction basics and your statutory obligations and requirements under the Homeowner Protection Act and regulation. There are 10 criteria used to evaluate your eligibility to receive an Owner Builder Authorization. These are, one, an applicant must be an individual, not a company although you can be a director of a family farm corporation. Two, you must have a registered interest in the land in which the dwelling is going to be built. Registered interest can be confirmed either by a title search performed through the Land Title and Survey Authority or from the assessment notices provided by BC Assessment. Registered interest can take the forms of fee simple life interest or a long-term lease of at least 15 years. When applying for an authorization as a director of a family farm corporation, the corporation must have a registered interest in the land on which the new home is to be built. And the corporation must have passed a resolution affirming that it will not dispose of that interest for at least one year from the date of first occupancy. Three, you must intend to build a single dwelling unit that is either a detached home under a single title or a single dwelling attached to a pre-existing building older than 10 years. A single dwelling does not include a duplex or a multi-unit residential building. It is acceptable to apply to build a dwelling in or attached to a new non-residential building, as long as that building does not have another dwelling unit in or attached to it. Examples include a residence over a garage or a caretaker suite. Four. You cannot sell or offer to sell or otherwise transfer your interest in the land either during construction or for at least one year after first occupancy. The Homeowner Protection Act regulation defines first occupancy to mean either the date of issue of the occupancy permit or if no occupancy permit has been issued for the new home, the date in which it was first occupied. Five. You must intend to use your home for personal use for at least one year after first occupancy. By personal use, we mean residential occupancy by the owner builder, which precludes rental use for that year. Six, you must not have been issued an owner builder authorization for a minimum of 18 months from the first occupancy of your previous owner built home. This period increases for repeat owner builders. If you have been issued two previous authorizations, 
you must wait a minimum of three years, and five years if you have received three or more authorizations. Seven, you can't live with an individual who does not also satisfy the 18-month, three- and five-year restriction. For example, if your family member was issued an owner-builder authorization within the past 18 months, you are not eligible to apply at this time. 8. You must intend to be the general contractor and plan to build or directly manage the construction of all or substantially all of your new home. This means being on-site, hiring, scheduling, and supervising the construction. And yes, even if you work full-time, you still need to hire, manage, and directly supervise the construction of your home in order to satisfy the requirements of your authorization. If you hire a builder, project manager, construction manager, or any third party to perform these functions, you as an owner builder will be in breach of the regulations, which may result in cancellation of your authorization. When you hire a construction professional to help build your new home, there are restrictions on that subcontractor's level of involvement in your owner builder project. BC Housing strongly encourages you to read Regulatory Bulletin Number 25, What Builders Need to Know About Owner-Builder Projects, to understand the acceptable level of involvement of subcontractors in your project. The Regulatory Bulletin is available for download from the Publications section under the Licensing and Consumer Services tab of the BC Housing website. Family members may help you build your home, but the same restrictions apply. As an owner-builder, you must remain responsible for the construction. Family members cannot act as a general contractor, nor substantially build the home. 9. You must have been in complete compliance with all previous owner-builder requirements. Examples of previous non-compliance include selling a previously owner-built home without an owner-builder disclosure notice, or selling an owner-built home within 12 months of first occupancy. And 10. You must obtain 70% or greater on your owner-builder authorization exam. After you have met the eligibility requirements, paid your application fee, and passed the exam, your owner-builder authorization will be approved. Owner builders can avoid committing offenses and incurring penalties by complying with the obligations as described in the Homeowner Protection Act and submitting timely and correct documentation to BC Housing. In the case where an owner builder fails to voluntarily comply with the Act or its regulation, BC Housing may issue a compliance order. The purpose of a compliance order is to remedy non-compliant behavior. If an owner builder fails to comply with a compliance order, a monetary penalty of up to $25,000 may be imposed. A compliance officer from BC Housing may be required to investigate suspected breaches of the Act or its regulation. An owner builder must not obstruct the compliance officer in the course of their duties, which may include site visits. The officer may question any person about the qualification of workers matters relating to licensing, or about the work performed by construction workers. A previously issued owner-builder authorization may be suspended or canceled if you, one, cease to be eligible to receive an authorization. For example, you become ineligible for an authorization if you don't manage the construction of the home, or don't reside in the home for 12 months after its construction. Two, if you made false statements on your application or refuse to provide material information requested by BC Housing, or three, if you have failed to comply with a compliance order or failed to have paid a monetary penalty if levied by BC Housing. BC Housing will provide you with written notice, complete with reasons for any decision to refuse, cancel, or suspend an owner-builder authorization. Remember, it is a requirement of your owner-builder authorization to notify the registrar of both the date of which first occupancy occurred and the names of all the tradespersons who contributed to the building of your new home. Unless granted permission by the registrar, 
you may not sell or offer to sell while a new home is being constructed or within 12 months of first occupancy. You may apply to the registrar for permission, which may be granted if you can prove that you would suffer undue hardship if permission to sell the house were refused. A fee may be required to process the application. If you decide to sell your home within 10 years after first occupancy, you must obtain an owner-builder disclosure notice for the home and provide it to prospective buyers prior to entering into a purchase and sale agreement. The owner-builder disclosure notice is free and can be downloaded directly from your BC Housing online account. This notice informs prospective buyers that the home was built by an owner-builder. The owner-builder disclosure notice is an important protection for the purchaser of an owner-built home. Failing to provide the notice prior to entering into a purchase agreement may result in monetary penalties. New homes built by licensed residential builders must include home warranty insurance. Owner-built homes are exempt from this mandatory requirement. However, unless you've arranged for optional home warranty insurance coverage as an owner-builder, you're personally liable for construction defects in the new home for all subsequent purchasers for a 10-year period from first occupancy. Although as an owner-builder, you are exempt from the new home warranty requirement, Section 23 of the Homeowner Protection Act clarifies that your obligations as an owner-builder are similar to the obligations of a licensed residential builder under a policy of home warranty insurance. Your obligation is that you must personally guarantee the following. One, the home is free from defects in materials and labor for a period of two years. Two, the home is free from defects in the building envelope for five years. And three, the home is free from structural defects for 10 years. These periods are taken from the date of the occupancy permit or the date of when the house was first occupied. The buyer protection provided by the statute enables subsequent purchasers to take legal action against you, the owner-builder, to correct defects if required. And the liability imposed by your statutory protection obligations cannot be waived by agreement or contract, including by any term in a purchase and sale agreement. We encourage you to familiarize yourself with Sections 21, 22, and 23 of the Homeowner Protection Act and Sections 4.1 and 19 of the Homeowner Protection Act Regulation for more details. VC Housing also publishes on the website written regulatory bulletins that provide detailed information on the Homeowner Protection Act and regulation. For example, Regulatory Bulletin No. 5 covers buying and selling an owner-built house. The owner-builder authorization process ensures quality construction of residential dwellings in British Columbia while providing protection for subsequent purchasers of the home. Understanding your statutory obligations and liabilities as an owner-builder is an important part in the process. The BC Housing website contains many more resources to help you through the owner-builder authorization process and can be found at bchousing.org slash licensing-consumer-services.